you found it. Welcome to Pot of Thunder, the recognized symbol of excellence in rock and roll podcasting. Guess who? Do you recognize my voice? It's my buddy Andy. Yeah, I can't get one past you. It's your buddy Andy, America's little brother. Can't even get one by the drunk guy there. <laughs> he came in hot this week. <coughs> yeah. Over to my immediate left, as always. Mm. There he is. Well, part of them, at least. Still ill? What's left is here. Still not feeling well? No. It's Gnarly Nick, the Garlic Dragon. Bam! Bam! What's wrong? Same sickness or a different one? Same sickness. Had had another sickness in the interim and the, and along the outer rim, if you will. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> uh <laughs> No, I can't. I can't shake anything. What's it's, going on with you? It sets up. It's a. I'm a host, you know, if you will. Yeah, a host for bacteria, yeah, parasites, what have it. you. Forget it. I saw something on Facebook. One of our listeners said something about going back, like stats of Thunder style, and finding all the episodes where Nick was sick and figuring out the percentage because it's probably pretty high. Probably double digits. <laughs> double digit percentage or double digit per- episodes? Well, ooh. Yeah, get into ten percent. That's a reasonable it's yeah. Let's estimate. Thirty, 30, epi- 30 episodes of sickness. Yeah. Of course, I'm joining them in that realm this week. Yeah, you are. And who are you? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, the roof is on tight, but I don't know if it's but on it's, tight enough. But it's on oh. fire now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I, I ain't blowing the roof off of anything tonight. No. So, oh, ladies and gentlemen, please. Put your hands together for the one, the only. Yeah, you better say my name and say it right, motherfucker. Uh, yes, sir. It's Chris L. There he is. The breakout star of the podcast medium over there on the couch. Not feeling well. Yeah, I don't have the energy to do anything if you say my name wrong. So <laughs> just get it anything. right. Get it right. So what's the problem with you guys? I don't you're, know. All, you're both ill. It's ridiculous. Eric Carr and Freddie Mercury circa 1991 <laughs> are fucking healthier than we are these days. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Listen to you it is, uh, I couldn't do the forever video. That's, that's, you wouldn't have the strength to get yeah, through that? No. Wow. Yeah. He's a uh, pretty animated drumming in that video. He did or, not hold it's back. Not, it's oh, no, it's God Gave, God rock, gave rock and Roll to you. Oh. Day. Similar looking video. Yeah. Okay. Well, still. Sepia tone. Yeah. Hanging out in forever. water. Well, we did uh, did suck it up and get here tonight because we've got an episode to put out. Plus, we have something to promote. Um, Next week, we don't want to, you know, hit the listeners with this unexpected, give them a week to prepare, but it is the anniversary month of our six years starting the show, which means it's Pot of Thunder Month. Oh, my God. Wow. I didn't know that, but if I did... It means cue Nick's O voice <laughs> for a whole month. What's, what could be better than that? <laughs> if I did, it might go a little something like this. <laughs> All month long. All month long. All month of April. How about that? Yeah. And it's Nick's birth month, too. So how about that? Damn. Hell of a month coming Huge up. Huge month. That's why we needed to get this episode out, put it out there, get you prepared. No excuses. Yep. Starts April 1st to next month, or, or next Monday for the next Next episode. Monday is April 1st, isn't it? And Pot of Thunder Month opens up with two Chris picks. How about that? Yeah. Boy, wow. we're it's coming in hot. <laughs> it is going to be worth it. It's just, you will not be disappointed by anything that happens next month. <laughs> it truly will be. You will make any combination of those first three noises, possibly all three, as you uh, become fully engorged and start ejaculating <laughs> every everything we put out next month. So. Start ejaculating. Yeah. And stop ejaculating on May first. <laughs> yeah, just one solid rope yeah, all just, month long. Yeah, all just, better wear your rubber pants next month. You're gonna need them. <laughs> just stand on a pier. I don't know what else. What your other options are other than that? Just stand in your bathtub all month. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's about it. So yeah, let's not dwell <laughs> on our 
sickness no, and uh, no. move ahead. I guess really one thing we can chat about before we get into it, uh, all the chit chat on the internet is about the release of the dirt on uh, Netflix. That's right. That came out uh, last Friday. Yes, I, I took advantage of being under the weather. Not that I need an excuse to sit on my ass all day on Sunday, but... I did and watched it this afternoon. Andy, you said you've watched some of it. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I started it today, but I'll probably finish it when we're done recording this later tonight. uh, I've only seen the trailer. Okay. Chris, your thoughts? Your your full review? Yeah, Yeah, I'd like to hear it. I'd like to hear Uh, what you thought. Well, going in, my expectations were based on the trailer was that it would be similar to the... uh, Def Leppard biopic that was on VH1 yeah. mm-hmm. years ago. Mm-hmm. And you know what? That's how I pronounce it. Biopic. Biopic. I don't think that's right. I think it's just fucking simpletons who are like, I don't know. well, it's a bio and it's a moving picture, so let's call it a biopic. Mm-hmm. Are you sure that's wrong? I don't care if it's I'm wrong. I'm just wondering. I'm saying. I've heard it both ways and I'm not sure. Biopic makes sense, but maybe I'm a simpleton. Yeah. Okay, I go on. I think you are. But so. biopic makes it sound like anything with, that with what, two eyes? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> optic, bio- it makes optic, it sound yeah. a little more sophisticated, which the dirt is not. Right. Um, so anyway, that was my expectation, and my expectations were realized. Okay. So I would equate it with that, meaning not that great, kind of lowest common denominator stuff. Mm-hmm. And here's the other thing. It's ba- it's based on the book, correct? Yeah. Well, everybody knows I don't read books. I have not read that book. Every scene or sequence in that movie I was familiar with through the Behind the Music episode and various other uh, interviews. So yeah. Well, those is are the all the book, top stories, Is I the guess. book just a rehash of all that? Isn't there any extra stuff in there? I don't know. I haven't read the book either. Apparently, it's, I it either. it's I, the it's most decadent rock book there is, according to everyone, but I just never... You know, I think I tried to find it, and at the time, it was when I was on the taking the train to and from work, so I was reading on my uh, Kindle app, mm. and it wasn't available for a digital <laughs> download All at the time. Out. Yeah, well, <laughs> for whatever reason, you had to buy the hard copy, and I was like, nah, and I never got back around to reading it, so I don't know if I ever will. So, yeah, I don't know. I uh, see a lot of... Uh, praise for it on social media and stuff it wasn't that great for me no no i'm best i could hope for what i saw when i was watching it was uh uh rock star steel dragon all that stuff that's what it looked like to me and i've rock star is way better and i've seen the def leppard behind the music too and i well, saw not the behind the music i mean i'm sorry the the biopic there you go yeah Get with the it. biopic <laughs> That's how B, I see it. Yeah, the, the Motley Crue one is a B.O. pick. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't think it was that great. I don't, I don't know where people's, like, resounding praise for it is coming from. It's just well, do you think it's just being a fan? And like, hey, this is cool that there's a movie about this band I, I love. They've yeah, been, they've been be. talking about it for years. Well, I yeah. think it started and stopped, and yeah, it's been produced by this company. That company dropped it. This guy was going to direct it, and you know, yeah. I think it's changed so much and over ten years or more. Christopher Walken at one point was rumored to play Ozzy Osbourne. Really? I remember wow. reading. I think it was like Vince Neil said that in an interview years and years ago. Wow, that that's what they had lined up. Hey, um. I'd like to uh, do this, put my song out there before we go any further. Okay. My song pick. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so well. if you can, if you can hit yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. We we've talked about. No, the it's dirt uh, it's just it's no, fine. it's just funny that uh, no. It, <laughs> you'll, what the you'll, hell's you'll, going on? You'll over know why there. I'm it's stopping. His phone it. is blowing up. You'll know why I'm stopping it abruptly. Nick's Who's been doing privy to this information? Not Nobody. Me. I don't know what's just, going on here. All right. Hey, yeah. time to turn the microphone. Yeah, over to the, the universe is. has stepped it should, in. It should make make sense why okay. I'm being so abrupt. All right. All right, Harold. This one's called Doctor Feelgood. Off of Doctor Feelgood. By the band Motley Crue. 
Wow. So that was my that was what I came in with. Uh, no less than three people requested. I was looking at the list. I noticed a lot of Motley Crue. A lot of Crue. Uh, yeah. Um, three it's probably people. The most. This is the most popular. Re- Van yeah. Halen and Motley Crue. Yeah. Are probably the top two. And and this song was the most popular one, and it's one I've always liked, of course. So, um, are you striking while the iron is hot here, Nick? Kinda. Look I felt you. compelled to do so. It's, it's a strategic. It's move. not. It's I not like it. my typical style, but uh, I felt compelled to do it. I'm like, well, people are requesting it, like a lot of Motley Crue. So, all right, I'm gonna. Timing is I'm good. Do I it. like uh, Dave Rotundi, Steven Johnson, and Mark Perillo were wow. the three. Cool listeners. Four. Three. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So well, yeah. Sorry, I had to no, be so sense. abrupt there, but I figured let's continue the conversation. Yeah. And plus, it's really, I don't, I don't want to get into too much of an involved uh, discussion about the movie. Everybody's, uh, everybody else is talking about it. So what are you gonna do? I've seen both sides of it. I've seen some really stupid reviews where it goes back to things that we've talked about a hundred times on this show about. What are your expectations when this is what you thought of it? Like people are like, oh, this seems like a really inappropriate time to release a movie like this in the midst of the Me Too movement. I'm like, what did you think the movie was? Like, like oh, there's some scenes in here that are, could be offensive. to them. Like, They're so telling there, a story so from not, the past. So none of the Oscar winning or nominated <laughs> movies have any sort of offensive material? Uh, That's what I'm saying. Material. Like, it's just a stupid thing well, to here's say. The, well, right, and here's the other thing is if you're... If you're a uh, big time proponent of the Me Too movement, right? Mm-hmm. You know what Motley Crue is about, sure. unless you've li- lived under some kind of rock for the past four decades. Don't watch the fucking movie, right? What are we, are we trying to censor stuff so we can't put that's, that kind of thing? That's out? what I was going to get to. I mean, give we'll me a you, break. We'll avoid lo- it. We'll use the term loosely, but. With any kind of art, especially of something that's supposed to be historical documentation, why would you change it to meet some societal thing? You know what I mean? If something, if there's a movie about a murder, you wouldn't well, take the murder out because murder is bad. Like know, we know it's bad. People, yeah, people aren't that hung up on murder though. I guess be not. Yeah, people murder, murder. murder is far more acceptable than yes, a lot of the behavior. Yeah, which is absolutely, yeah. yeah. But my point being. This is they're saying this is the stuff that happened. People decided to make a movie about it. You don't have to like it, but why? I mean, it's there. It happened. It's I, a movie. I think w- I haven't seen the movie, but I, I mean, it's I, their story. Watch the know? trailer. I think I kind of know like what it's about. Um, it's somewhat entertained by that, but more entertained by any sort of press they're doing to uh, <laughs> to yeah, promote it. I haven't it. seen much of it as well. Well, there was the one quote that I sent you guys that I saw. The headline was Nikki Six saying that at the, at that point, I think it was maybe the point where he OD'd. Uh-huh. Oh, I yeah. was I was doing a thousand dollars worth of uh, what was it? The first uh, of heroin. Of heroin, and then Bullshit! a day, <laughs> a, a little over a thousand dollars a day of heroin, and then yeah. was supplementing that with a thousand dollars a day of cocaine mm. <laughs> and, 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 and <laughs> alcohol <Yeah. laughs> and i i figured roughly that comes to about s- <laughs> just the alcohol yeah in around that year i did oh you uh, went back i did a little calculation <laughs> yeah. yeah wow okay and figured it to about 65 to 70 bottles of Jack Daniels per day. Per day <laughs> is what he was drinking. <laughs> Which are yeah. $20 now. Oh, he was getting so that's, I mean, and that's 50 bottles a day in today's money. Back then, wow. even more. And that's another thing. People are complaining about the continuity errors and the sequences of events, blah, blah, blah. It's like, listen to what Nick just laid out there. This man is a, a pathological <laughs> liar. <laughs> What, 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 you're going to expect historical accuracy from anything? I mean, it's just, people, how do you not get it, man? It's like the, the facts will be adjusted yeah. to fit the story. Line, yeah. Not I the don't, other way I, around. I don't, this is not a fucking documentary. No. Yeah. And honestly, I don't think Jimmy Stewart's uh, starring role in um, the Glenn Miller story was perfectly timelined and historically i'm accurate. sure it wasn't i'm just saying yeah. there's never it's, been a it's not it's not biopic that's been dead nuts 
historically accurate. Because then they ever. wouldn't they wouldn't call it a biopic. Yeah, no. well, whatever. It, it is. But I'm it's, just saying it would be a it would be a documentary. It's a Holly. Yeah. It's a Hollywood production. Right. They need to put a storyline out there, and, and they it, need to condense information right. into it. Whatever. And if an some, and half, something interesting hours. happened outside of a, of the proper storyline, they will reorganize. Yes. The sequence of events to make it work in that storyline has been done forever. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I understand if you're a fan and you notice that, but to be upset about well, it, that's it's like, and that's stuff that I heard out. about the Queen movie too. That that there were, you know, same there, thing. There were uh, meta fans who, uh, yeah, were upset but about I mean, that. That's cool that you noticed. I'm sure the people who wrote the movie noticed too, and they yeah. said, "Hey, look, <laughs> we've got to make this 90 minutes, so we're going to grab this cool piece of information and, in, in, and slide it in here." And in both cases, the band was directly involved in it. They were clearly signed off on it yeah. because they get it. They're right. in the entertainment business. It's not that people didn't pay attention. Right. It's like you, you want to be a, a ridiculous jackass. Go go into next. When you go to work tomorrow and there's somebody you know who saw (laughs) Bohemian Rhapsody or even The Dirt, take them aside and regale them with (laughs) your knowledge of the actual sequence of events. They are going to want to get away from you as soon as possible. (laughs) Nobody cares. You know what really happened. The casual casual fan, which is where all the money is, wants the storyline. And they got it. So that, that reminds me of when I worked in the bookstore years ago and went to a coworker, and all it was was, oh, did you see? Uh, I forgot what it was. It was one of the one of the episode two or episode three Star Wars had just come out. I'm like, oh, yeah. did you go see it? He's like, yeah, I saw it. I'm like, all I, you know, how was it? That was that was as far as I had to go. Did he tell you that it was historically inaccurate? He, t- he told me that it was good. <laughs> However, there were these few points that. He that he would have done differently, and he I I it could have the movie could have been fixed, and I'll give you three ways that it could have been <laughs> fixed. And yeah. yeah, save your breath. I'm not interested. So I don't know. And I, it's I don't know why people just they. I it's it's one of those can't just let it go. I think know? it's one of those things where if you've never been through that process of making something like that yeah you it's like okay well it's here in my hands i'm taking it in and i'm critiquing it yeah sounds slightly like what we do here but um it's it's in my hands i'm critiquing it but you think that you're you're forgetting that it was it didn't exist somebody had to someone had to create that entire thing it came from nothing yeah and that's what that's what they came up with. So if you like ninety five percent of it, I, they did a pretty good job, right? <laughs> you know, it is weird to go in and to be kind like, of split what I hair, done. to split hairs over a few things here and there. It's also little... very lazy and arrogant to be like, you did all that work and that came from your brain. Here's how I would make it better without <laughs> actually contributing anything. Yeah, here's here's anything. where here's where you failed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And not only that, these kind of productions get shown to test audiences. Okay. And and if the feedback is such, they will reorganize, reshoot, rewrite, do yeah. all that stuff to put butts in seats and to get rentals and all of the residual income. Yep. So the things that you would do would destroy <laughs> all the fucking monetization of this pr- production. So you wouldn't be involved for very long, if ever. Yeah, which is why, why you're not. Probably, why you're not. <laughs> So yeah. anyway, to the song. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This was one that I felt compelled to do. Now, was um, that just because of the week? Did it, you it, think, you know what, all this Motley was, Crue talk? Let me see what's I kinda, on the list. I was looking through the list, and I noticed there was a lot of Motley Crue, and I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, well, peop-, and then I, and then it, of course, immediately occurred to me, well, there, a lot of people are talking about them, obviously, right now. Every once in a while, we do so, the right so thing. So maybe it we? makes sense to do a <laughs> Motley Crue song. Yeah. Funny. So um, yeah, I went with one, the, the one that was most requested um, by by more you know more people than anybody, and uh, yeah, this wouldn't be what, what you would qualify as a deep cut. No, this it's not a, one of their biggest hits. So. Yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely one that is going to be immediately familiar to everybody. 
Um, and it's one that I personally remember very well when it originally came out. Oh, I, so. d- I do too. I almost, uh, I won't say ex- the exact location, but I, it's one of those when and where did you hear it first? Really? It was that big of a deal? Huh? Well, it was... It was I I won't say it's was that big of a deal in terms of how it was necessarily being promoted, but I was in my uh, summer internship in Milwaukee, summer of '89, and uh, they released it as a single before the album toward the end of that summer, mm-hmm. and uh, you know I was uh, I was at home or the room I was renting, and I had brought my entire stereo with me for this internship i could not be without my stereo makes and, sense uh, and i tell you when that when that thing came on the fm radio it just exploded out of the speakers and after the th- kind of thin sounding albums theater of pain and girls girls mm-hmm. girls this was like oh my god what what how did they achieve this you know and it yeah. just uh <sighs> grabbed me instantly and uh you know i w- back then i wasn't i mean i i loved the hair bands for the tits and ass videos obviously um i wasn't a huge consumer of the music in terms of owning a lot of that stuff in fact yeah. i think the only uh technically hair metal album i ever know owned was dock and tooth and nail Again, I didn't I need the, it. It's I guess just, they are. I mean, I don't, I don't even know. Oh, they, they definitely they, would be. I guess. Yeah. They would, they're would. they definitely in that uh, classification. But it was that music was all over MTV. Couldn't get away from it. Yeah. Other guys on the f- floor in the dorm had tons of it, so I had access to it, so I didn't really need to buy much of it. So, yeah. so I wasn't a huge crew fan until... Dr. Feelgood came out and it's just the 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 sound of it yeah. was just such a quantum leap forward. And again, this is the album that Lars Ulrich heard and said, I want our next album to sound like this and then came the black album. So Yeah. And obviously Metallica had rejected that scene was was they were completely against everything it was about and then that album came out and it said we need to sound like this i mean that what a statement that yeah, is yeah that's true nick what do you remember about this i remember i was an mtv kid you yeah. know dial mtv and all that stuff every night mm-hmm. that was that was my thing and um the uh yeah, i i was pretty young really but i remember like getting the video like okay i kind of get what's happening with this guy <laughs> yeah. even at that age he's basically tito king of the streets he's it's it's like scarface kind of yeah you know? and uh it, it, like i think our older brother had this cd and there were a few songs on there that like that i enjoyed also um but i ended up getting a copy of decade of decadence was it two years later i think it was 91 yeah and uh this was on there it was like a a remix i never i've never listened to them side by side to hear if there's an actual difference i think it's it it says it's a remix um but yeah decade of decadence was like hit after hit after hit after hit even like the newer songs were i mean my I guess I can come out with my favorite crew song of all time. Sure, it, now's the time. Primal to do it. Scream was that's the, you know that was the the big single off yeah. of uh, Decade yeah. of Decadence. So yeah, that was, it's not a band that I really hang out and listen to, but I know a lot of their stuff apparently. Yeah, yeah. My first viewing of the video was uh, after I'd gotten done with my internship in Milwaukee and went back to uh, college town because I had a couple of terms left to finish out my degree. Uh, I think it was the day I got back from uh, the internship and we decided to uh, celebrate by dropping some acid. And uh, <laughs> and right after it kicked in, that video came on Dial MTV. And I got to tell you, watching that, while <laughs> in that state with all the morphing with and uh with mick mars right before the guitar solo or right after the guitar yeah, solo. yeah you know the 
the the the Tommy Lee flipping over the drum set that's on fire and all this stuff. It was quite the uh, quite the experience and solidified my appreciation for this particular track. So I haven't seen that video forever, but what was the connection, if any, between the drug dealer story, like the narrative part, and the band performing in a tent? Like I don't a know. medicine man <laughs> tent, Native it's, American. It, no, tent. it doesn't. It have like a sort of a like a you're st- flying it, like right. It's kind of you're flying over a desert, which at right the beginning, at the beginning, think, yeah. which was it always made me think of. Uh, there's that the desert song by Def Leppard, which was right around the same time, if not, well, I don't remember, but uh, same kind of deal in the video. I think uh, flying over the sandy dunes for some reason. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. I never really pondered it before, but I it mean, looks the only cool. thing I can think of is maybe a Dr. Feelgood type of guy would be like a carnival barker trying to get people to buy something or do something out of it. Oh, like a, what is that called? A tent? Th- what is those? Not tent revival. I'm thinking of like the... The dudes who sell like elixirs, snake oil salesmen, snake oil yeah. salesmen or something. I don't yeah, know. that's the only possible connection I can make. But they look like they they look like they were oiled up. It wasn't it wasn't it like that? <laughs> it was the hot fire, out there. The fire was glistening off. Yeah, everything's on fire. The, the it's glowing. a desert. It's yeah. warm out there. Yeah. You're gonna be sweating. Yeah, lots of yayo being uh, ingested. There's gonna be some perspiration. But wasn't this allegedly when they were off of all drugs? Well, right. Was it just the, the storyline. Yeah, 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 totally. You know. But yes, it was uh, when they were allegedly clean. And uh, Was it everyone? That's what they s- alleged. Not just Vince? Because no. wasn't Vince first? <laughs> yeah, after, after the, the Razzle yeah. incident. Yeah. But this was after, of course, Nikki Six's alleged death and coming back to life and all that stuff, so... And that's, uh, I mean, it seemed like it's a good thing, obviously, you know, that they're like, hey, we're all clean. And it's, but it seemed like it was part of the, it was part of their image at that point Mm -hmm. that these guys were so bad and now they're clean and they're like better than ever. Yeah. Very much like Aerosmith a couple years before that with permanent vacation. Yeah. And that, that worked for them. So why not, why not do that for Motley Crue? And it was probably true, right? I mean, especially what was right before Girls, Girls, Girls? Yeah. Dr. Feelgood's a lot better than Girls, Girls, Girls. Oh, so God, like, yes. Well, Girls, Girls, Girls is pretty good, but just the production is super thin. Theater of Pain is crap. Yeah. My opinion. Yeah. So, but I mean, there was some truth to the fact that these guys were clean and sober. Yeah, and yeah I think, band I, and again, I think it. I think it conveniently fit the narrative and and made for a a nice uh, marketing angle. But I th- again, Vince Neil killed somebody. Nick Nikki Six allegedly died. It, so it was necessary for them to clean. Was up, it, I, was yeah. Mick Mars ever like a big drug user? Well, see, that's another thing with the continuity of the movie. That early on they put out his bone disease diagnosis which Uh i don't think came until much later but they put that early in the movie to frame it as he was a uh, addicted to pills for pain blah 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 so you know hard to say but obviously vince neal and nikki six were the main offenders but uh you know they obviously they all indulged and god knows what so so here's my question. There's two versions here. We've got the 20th anniversary, which is probably a remix. Do we want Give me that? the original, All right? right yeah, Nick? If we, yeah, if we can get the original, I would say I can do that. Probably not. Cuz I mean, there's also I'm differentiate, sure. but you uh, know. Yeah. I mean, and then there's there's the one on Decade of Decadence which might be slightly different too, but yeah, I would say the original. All right. Do we listen to Terror and Tinseltown too or skip over that? I don't even know what that yeah, is. I, don't I never re- I don't remember. Uh, it's like the forty-second intro. Is it to the like album? the rock and roll party, basically? Yeah, but it's the first thing on the album. It's one. Of I don't want to listen. It's like the radioactive from yeah. <laughs> Gene's solo it's, album. I mean, unless you it's think it. No, uh, I think we're okay gonna, without it. Yeah, yeah I, I think we could just bust right into it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, are you guys ready? Yeah. 
I'm right. ready. Let's do it. Again, the first time I heard that, it just exploded out of the speakers and just, you know, the, the DJ was playing it up like, here it is, the new title track from Motley Crue. I think it was, I happened to catch it on the whatever the FM rock radio station in Milwaukee was when it, uh, the first time they played it. Mm. And just that, that descending guitar thing into this riff and just the hugeness the drums like holy shit this is sounding great so it really uh you know you don't need terror in tinsel town you just take this shoe to the mouth basically (laughs) is what what you're getting and uh really just in a second or two you're just like okay they're they're, they've turned a corner here they've raised their game considerably This is a this is a prime example of that Tommy Lee is so very he stands out amongst rock drummers. Yeah. He's I mean he obviously is a great player, but this drum beat you if you heard this drum beat you know exactly what song this is. Right. This, I if mean, someone's playing it at guitar yeah, center. Yeah. I mean or he does you know. like drum riffs. Right, like like recognizable drum beats for something like this. Mm-hmm. It's and he's always been great at that. And the beats that he works in the hi hat and opens it up is just like you know, you don't hear that from very many guys of this ilk or really any kind of rock drummer. I mean, it's just so vital to the to the like you said the whole groove of the song. Yeah, I mean he's he's you know obviously. There's the whole like tabloid celebrity side of him and all that, but yeah. but make no mistake, he's one of the all time great rock drummers. Yeah, and it, it, again, it, there's probably a lot of people who have the same type of misconceptions that people have about Gene Simmons, and it caused them to impugn him as a musician. Yeah, it's simply not possible with Tommy Lee. I mean, again, you you could be you could have you could be this the originator of the me too movement and you would have to acknowledge tommy lee's brilliance as a drummer amazing Nick's following along with the guitar tablature that he bought probably in 1990-something, early 90s. 92 or something like that, yeah. Wow, so So, I didn't know you still had that. Yeah, so if if you guys need, uh, you don't have to look up the lyrics because I've got the authentic guitar tab edition of this song. Uh, it's the actual Warner Brothers publication. Oh, wow. So. Why don't you pull that guitar down and play along <laughs> yeah. behind you? Oh, yeah. boy. Grab the one with the whammy bar because you're going to yeah, need it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's happening already. You know, Mick Mars is, again, he's one of those guys who just, with each passing year, I appreciate the guy more and more, you know. I think uh, <clears throat> at times during the 80s, I kind of wrote him off as a little bit of a not that great of a player, you know, in this genre. He was definitely far down on the list of technical proficiency but um just always had great riffs and again over time i've really come to appreciate them like you know girls 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 again the the production of it is just very thin for me but that main riff of Mm -hmm. that song so fucking cool and uh and this is just uh, He's incredible on this song. Really, the whole band is. I mean, they just what a what a what a grab of the throat of the music industry. And also, I think uh, I think they kind of had to uh, raise their game in kind of response to Guns and Roses coming out. You know, because they they were kind of putting the kibosh on the on the the overly glam stuff. And you know, you had to. You had to have some grit to 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 what you're doing in the wake of yeah. Guns N' Roses coming out, and boy, if if this was 
if they felt a need to respond to that, they nailed it 100%. Fucking great riff, man. The little ninth chord thrown in there. So cool. Sounds great. Really, uh, really awesome. Music by Mick Mars and Nikki Six. There you go. Lyrics by Lick, by Nikki Six. Mm. Nikki Six, huh? Okay. Yeah, yeah he's the, he's contribute or he's the sole uh, lyrical contributor, according to this. I like that they worked in some cowbell too. It's a, yeah, yeah, they. It's cool. It's kind of like it a is. baritone Kyle Bell. It is, it's yeah. Very deep sounding, almost like a wood block, almost. Yeah, it's just some extra percussion though. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. works. Oh, it's excellent. Everything. This is a, this is a masterpiece of rock production. You know, say what you want about what Metallica became with the Black Album or whatever, but Bob Rock was had the the magic touch back then, like. Sonic Temple by the Cult, incredible sounding album. Uh, he was he was the man back then. Do Everybody you know anything that he did as far as like technique that made him stand out? Or you don't know that? I I would like. Know. What was he doing that was so different from everybody else? Especially like drum sounds. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Just big someone l- smarter than us will tell us. I mean, probably just like. Probably just the way he mic'd him, I'm thinking. Hmm. It probably had a lot to do with it. And yeah. And the, just, whatever you know, room he used yeah. when, he, when he was micing him. Well, he figured it out. Yeah. So. Nick, you're the lyrics guy today because you've got the official lyrics. And this is a song which, as cool as you know Vince Neil sounds on here, mm-hmm. very hard to understand. At least I've always thought so. If you're somebody who's known the song for 30 years and and known the lyrics the whole time, you're probably like, oh no, I know, I can, I can hear him. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> now this is not a very, it's not easily intelligible what he's saying. Try to think about that. This song's been out for 30 years this summer. 30 fucking years. It's crazy, huh? It is yeah. crazy. Uh, rat-tailed Jimmy is a second-hand hood. He deals out of Holly- out in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Got si- got a '65 Chevy Prime Red Flames. Traded for some powdered goods. Oh, okay. Probably not donuts, but I'm not gonna <laughs> go too far yet. So uh, he's into bartering. I like that. He's kind of, yeah, he's kind of, he does his own thing. Cur- he's got his own currency. What's it going to take to get you into these powdered goods today? <laughs> <laughs> Trade me your car? Yeah, let's do it. Why not? Um, listen to that guitar tone. Um, right around the time, uh, right around this era, it was really picking up steam, but the... Uh, <clears throat> the Soldano Amplifier Company was really taking hold and defining the sound of uh, of uh, 80s kind of hard rock, hair metal, and Mick Mars had gotten on board at this point and has continued with them up till, you know, I guess the present day, but what a fucking kick-ass guitar tone, just aggressive, nasty, in-your-face brilliant sounding so uh hats off to him and mike soldano made some of the greatest uh, guitar amplifiers in history great stuff (laughs) what does he say about a candy cane oh he sure does say candy cane uh jigsaw jimmy first he was rat tail jimmy Okay. So that's kind of like, I think there's an ascent happening there within the the underworld. Wow. He's, perhaps. Going, he's moving up the ladder. He got a promotion. He's Jigsaw Jimmy. Rat tail, it's like, oh, this, okay, this weasel yeah. kid, you know? Yeah. Now yeah, it's, I took that as a reference to his hairstyle. <laughs> oh, that, that was not. A rat tail uh, thing in uh, the back. I remember I 
When I worked at the supermarket in the late 90s, man, there were, there were people. There were still rat tails? There were the late still 90s? people. Well, not that, I'm, not that I'm saying anything. I'm not drawing this conclusion necessarily. Just say it, Nick. But uh, it was right next to a trailer court. And there were there were rat tails happening. And I remember being like, I remember being like, there was like a feeling of disappointment and <laughs> and like like <laughs> oh you, you might know, have killed Chris <laughs> <laughs> look at him oh he's not okay <laughs> but that's like it was like a mixture of things but disappointment was in there mm-hmm. and just like <laughs> come on <laughs> what yeah. are you doing yeah it's just what how do you, how do you hit your wagon to a hairstyle like that I I get now. it when it was like in in fashion but. I mean, and the, and why it was in fashion, that's another discussion, but when it's clearly gone, yeah, w- w- how do you cling to that? I don't it's, get it's it. A, it's not a good look whatsoever. No, there's no redeeming quality <laughs> no. to it. No offense to anybody who, who may have had it. Or I, still does. Or still does. <laughs> Well, that's that's on them if they still. Well, do. everybody's had an unfortunate hairstyle yeah. to blend in with the times, but you get rid of it. But eventually. that, uh, but that though, that's going a bit far. Well, yeah, it definitely is. That's like that's like gang initiation kind of peer pressure. Plus, it takes like I, I, maybe the reason is it takes a two three year commitment to get a substantial rat tail going on. <laughs> that's know. true. Yeah. <laughs> It's um, not just like getting lines in your side of your head. No. That kind of that could grow out in a month, you'll be done with it. Rat tail, you're right. That's like a long term commitment. Yeah, and right? there's and there's that mid you know, that middle time where it's it's like <laughs> when it's like two inches yeah. long, it's it just either, looks weird. It's either you need a haircut or are you okay, are you doing the rat tail? Or yeah. Is it looks this like a, a dog's tail <laughs> that's had half the cut <laughs> off. A yeah. Dober, yeah, yeah, Doberman's Dober exactly. tail. <laughs> a little nub sticking yep. up. Yeah. Um Jigsaw Jimmy. He's running a gang, but I hear he's doing okay. Got a cozy little job. Sells the Mexican mob packages of candy cane. Oh, okay. Got it. So he's he's like, he's getting in on the action. Yeah. It's a nice little gig he got well, himself. And, and again, you know, the, the, the subject matter of this song is the down and dirty, uh, disgusting underbelly of the Sunset Strip scene, which is what Guns N' Roses kind of exposed and yeah. Welcome to the Jungle. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't recall it being stated as such, but maybe it was. But I, this is clearly to me now, in retrospect, a, a response to that. Guns N' Roses laid down the gauntlet, you know, the fucking... Uh, uh, smoking in the boys room wasn't going to cut it anymore in terms of what was going to make you legit in this scene yeah Does anybody else ever hear uh, some, um, somebody, somebody's going pee there? No? <laughs> go oh, I can't say that I have. No? <laughs> okay. Oh, you know what I heard? Let's go back. What did, yeah. And I think I'm going pee. <laughs> That's what I always heard. Hey, man. <laughs> Drug deal with the Mexican mob goes sour. You might find yourself pissing your pants, <laughs> shitting your pants, even. Yeah, it's Cop- got to be a dicey situation. Cops on the corner always ignore somebody's getting paid. Ah, uh, cops on the take. In fact, isn't there <laughs> depiction in the video yep. of him paying off the cops? Walking up to the the window goes down, and he comes walking up yep. to the to the to the car. Yeah. Jimmy's got it wired, laws for hire, got it made in the shade. Man, oh man. Nikki Six making some bold statements here. It's it's accusatory uh, statements. Well, and it's really it's uh it it's like a movie. I mean it's it's probably like many movies that have existed before the song came out. Sure. So it's you know, it's it's not completely unheard of subject matter but put this way this bluntly in a song especially a song that was getting so much spotlight yeah it's it's pretty uh 
pretty exciting and pretty you know kind of like love boat pretty exciting and new <laughs> for for that scene yeah um, well yes absolutely Oh, was that burst of lyrics? That was a, yeah. Uh, got a little hideaway, does business all day. Wait, did I go too far back? I apologize. Oh, yeah. No, I'm good. Got a little hideaway, does business all day, but at night he'll always be found. Selling sugar to the sweet people on the street. Call this Jimmy's town. Mm. Some good rhyme scheme. Yeah, some good lyrics, you know. Yeah. Nikki Six with all the... Uh, all the things you can criticize about the guy. He he knew how to write a song. He, he can spin a yarn, yeah. whether it's in interviews or <laughs> in lyrics. See, now, it, you know, Vince Neil being in a, a better physical state could deliver these lyrics live in, in the past 20 years. There's no way he's rattling these off. He's lumbering through them, pointing the mic <laughs> at the crowd. You mic know. point. I mean, he's, from when I saw him last... He was putting in a decent effort. I'll give him some credit. And he was making sure he hit. He knew, I think, what what's the part I got to hit here. So it would be, yeah, like kind of rattling. And so then he, if there was like a note that like a high to... part that he needed to hit. Yeah, absolutely. Like he was, he was still going for some of it, but. But it's an abridged version. Yeah. It's a Cliff yeah. Notes version. <laughs> yeah, more or less. Yeah. <laughs> I never understood. He's that, gonna be your Frankenstein. I don't know. I don't know what that means, yeah. but e- either what? the, like the monster or the doctor. Maybe he's the doctor that makes you a monster. Maybe bring no, by you're, selling no, you the drugs because because I yeah because it he, he's probably not gonna be your Frankenstein monster. He's probably gonna you're gonna you're gonna doctor. be the monster. Yeah. yeah, and he will make a monster of you. Yeah, there you go. Makes sense right, though. Well, I always just thought that was weird. When thirty I was a year kid. mystery. I didn't get it. Yeah, yeah, I never even gave it any thought. But uh, it's a cool, cool little thing for Vince to spit out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's got the. Yeah, what do you call that kind of that kind of quality to his voice? It's <sighs> nasally. It, it's definitely yeah, definitely nasally. Adenoidal. <laughs> I'll go with that. Sure. <laughs> yeah, but it's. See, it's because it's not a growl. He never was a growler. No, but yeah, like a yeah. I guess we'll go with with Ed Noidle. Sure, <laughs> but he's still. But it's still like he gets into like a, th- a little theatrical kind of like dirty kind of uh, voice there. Mm-hmm. A little scratchy, maybe. Yeah, he's got some grit to it. Yeah, yeah, but but it's definitely he's never been a lower register kind of guttural no guy no. Um, let's see here. Nick's going back to the tablature here. I am. I'm trying to follow it. I don't know if that solo is in here. We might have a problem, but anyway, yeah, I'll, gonna, I'll write to the publisher on my gonna, own time. You're not gonna. <laughs> you're not gonna note that out. You know. <laughs> um, they don't attempt to note it out. <coughs> uh, they probably do. I don't know if I see that part. Anyway, that's that's. Yeah, you never really got stuff. that, and you, in like. Uh, yeah, I think we're just gonna get the main guitar solo. Yeah, that's about it. It's uh. You get a tab book for that, just like the musical notation. It's more it goes with the vocal melody. Yeah, and I guess if you're a if you're a pianist and you're a sight reader, you could you could rattle this off there. It's uh, you've got the you, you've got quite a bit of notation there. But uh, um, yeah, my that, first guitar teacher tried to get me into reading music and got into it a little bit, and I could have eventually read a chord chart, but. Just to look at something like that and like yeah. replicate it, the rests and all that stuff. It's like I can't wrap my mind around I, that. It's pretty, pretty complex stuff. I would like to. That's like a thing where oh, it's, if I ever get time on my hands where I have nothing to do, 
I'm going to learn how to do that, but it's never going to happen, let's face it. Man, when you retire or something. Yeah, I probably still do. won't do it. But <laughs> No, I mean, it's like a thing where I can I can write it out. You know, I can, yeah, I, I can. understand what's on here, but I got to like write it out and kind of figure it out in my well, own yeah. terms. I would have to look at it and count every like every line in space and be like, okay, that's Yeah, I kind of have that problem too. <laughs> like, I can't just like you you know, there's the people who can just you could be like, hey, you never heard this song before? Yeah. Open it up and play it. Yeah. Okay. That's dude, dude, well, that's dude, 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 dude. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 the way they've got it notated here, there's there's four sharps here, so it's like, oh man, I got to remember which notes these sh- are sharps normally. Yeah, the key uh, signature. Yeah, you take that into account. It's very complex. Yeah, we've got a few naturals happening here, calling off the dogs on the sharps, and oh boy, <laughs> oh boy, but uh, that it's, that huge. Dr. Feelgood vocal, that's one where when you're at a Motley Crue show, it's still cool, but you kind of realize that just Nikki Six doing that backup by himself, by himself there's probably, there's probably a, you know, a, oh, absolutely. a tape. <laughs> but it's just funny just because even if you're, and I don't, I don't even know what Nikki Six what his voice sounds like in a, I don't either, in a vocal sort of uh, situation here, no. but, uh, because he's never taken a lead vocal, has he? Did he on his uh, solo album? I wonder. I never heard it. Like the I, six. I I, I disliked stuff. the the little bit that I heard of it. That I never really went and checked it out. But um, I wonder. Maybe he has. But uh, it's one of those things where if you've got like you could have like Pavarotti and I don't know <laughs> who's who's another. Andy, your turn. <laughs> I'll say Pavarotti. Who do you got? I go with Pavarotti. Okay, two who's Pavarotti's. The, who's the blind one? I'll take the blind one. Yeah, the, yeah. It's so, there you yeah. go. Yeah, so you could have those two doing this. It's not. It's still not going to sound like that. So you suspend your disbelief in a live setting. That's just you what mean, happens. Because it's so many voices. Oh yeah, when you. Yeah. It's like Wild Side. When they say the word Wild Side mm-hmm. during the chorus, it's like okay, well that's well, that's clearly a hundred voices. Yeah. In the studio. The other thing they did toward the end, well, actually starting with this tour, actually starting with the previous tour. Was they had the two chicks on That's backing true. vocals? A brilliant move, by the way, on their part. Mainly, the chicks were fucking hot. Okay, <laughs> started there, but you know, to to add that element, to, you know, to round out the band that way, well, that was you didn't see that from any other bands. That was a pretty cool twist they put on and it. And they were prominently featured in the same old situation video if I recall. Oh yeah. Yeah. There was there was a lot of uh a lot of what do you call sweeping camera shots yeah. <laughs> of the backing singers. Well, you first uh encountered them in the Wild Side video. So oh, they had two yeah. leather clad chicks singing back up. It's like, okay, I like this. <laughs> I don't I'm not crazy about the production of it but wild side is another song about the gritty underbelly of la or wherever they were so they were kind of moving that direction but the the production didn't match up with the subject matter this is just a full everything in alignment there's a lot there uh, he'll tell you he's the king of these barrio streets, moving up to Shangri-La. Came by his wealth as a matter of luck. Says he never broke no law. Well, he's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. Which is he's fine. A, he's a confidence man. <laughs> yeah. Clearly. <laughs> right. But you got to, why admit to something when you don't have to? Yeah. Nobody can prove otherwise <laughs> until you... Till the cops get to you and arrest you. Yeah, I mean that's a a perfect lead um, single, considering that the whole th- the whole thing about the band getting clean. Yeah, it goes the, with the, the, the story of. Hope I'm not spoiling anything. The imminent downfall of a dr- <laughs> of a drug pusher slash kingpin. Yeah, this isn't a song. This isn't just celebrating the yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. It, <laughs> It does, yeah. It doesn't. There's an arc to this. It doesn't story. end with him, uh, you know, getting a gold watch after 30 <laughs> years. Yeah, retiring and living to what 90 or something. Yeah, hanging out with the grandkids. No, that doesn't happen in this lifestyle, unfortunately. The, the exploding, uh, 
the exploding uh, packets of uh, powder in the video kind of uh, <laughs> you kind of you kind of get what's happening there. Right. There's a lot going on with the guitar. Yeah. Snap. Yeah, they're mixing in some some uh, little fills there and stuff. It's like blending in more more elements as they go along. Mm-hmm. Um, two-time loser running out of juice. Time to move out quick. Heard a rumor going around. Jimmy's going down. This time it's going to stick. Jimmy better get out of there. This is Walls like, are closing in. This is like when, when uh, Kojak's looking at you through the doorway. <laughs> like, okay, it's over now. Yeah. They, the they, heat's they, turning up. They, on you. They've got me. They must have something because they're here for me. What were those lyrics? It's a, I think you could make most of them. Yeah, out. and the one I wasn't sure if I always heard it right. Apparently, I did. Uh, let's see. Let him soothe your soul. Just take his hand. Some people call him an evil man. Let him introduce himself real good. He's the good, only good, one. Good, real good. <laughs> good, good, feel good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Listening to that, I was just focusing on the drums, and I kind of had a little bit of a flashback. Back to when I was in a band, I had sort of a second Motley Crue phase after like the initial one of listening to this stuff with you and Jay when we were kids. Like I had a like I'm gonna go back and listen to some Motley Crue and got into them again, and then I just remember being like almost mad that the drummer in our band could never play like this, and I'd be like, why can't we just ha- know a guy who has that kind of like timing and creativity and is solid like that, and it's not like we're uh, like walking on an ice patch, hoping that, you know, the beat doesn't just fall apart yeah. and the song is ruined. Yeah. Like such a solid dude playing the drums. Well, and there you go. That's another case of <laughs> unrealistic expectations. I know, but it's just like it's just like a jealousy, just like a rock solid drummer like that. That sounds good and is creative. Like, well, oh. and that's the thing. It's like and then, you know, him as a person, he's just such a bubblehead, you know, just yeah. to Always getting into stupid shit, idiotic situations, whatever. Yeah. But it, the, the man as a musician is just incredible. Yeah. It's, uh, and just uh, the intensity it brings in, like you said, the creativity. You know, it's it's there in spades. And uh, again, he's because of his persona. A lot of people will dismiss his musical talent, and that's just pretty bogus i mean i again i you know if you're into mumford and sons or any of that <laughs> again, bullshit whatever again you, you cannot you cannot deny the uh the the musical the considerable musical talent of tommy lee just an amazing drummer and just in case if anybody's wondering what they should be doing here uh for the lead guitar part yeah uh, simulate wind blowing with vibrato <laughs> bar after picking harmonic at the A string twelfth fret. Huh. So play, that's how it's play along huh? at home. Yeah, I don't want to give away too much of uh of what I purchased here for three ninety five. Jeez, I didn't know uh, it got descriptive like that. Yeah, yeah. I thought it would just like say harmonic on simulate wind blowing. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Plus, what's the uh? G- Turn to the first page of that because they usually at the beginning have up at the top have a uh, oh, book just fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, good run. yeah, nothing, nothing. Uh, oh, you mean crazy, as far as the it, style? Yeah, it yeah. just says uh, moderate tempo is okay. pretty much the yeah all uh, you, all the instruction you, you get at the beginning. You wish but. they'd get a little more uh, creative with the description there, but oh well. Hmm. Well. Anyway, this is, yeah. Wind blowing. Let's simulate. Let's hear what it sounds like to simulate wind blowing. There you go. There 
it is. There it is. <laughs> a mark of quality always. <laughs> and uh it, it yeah, so great. Not r- n- not written in my tab though for some reason. The word guitar is yeah, not in there. Why not? It's a mistake. I, I, Here, let me get you a pen. <laughs> Add it in. Yeah. And it. of course delivered with some extra pizzazz. Guitar. Yeah. Gotta love it. He he's 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 all pizzazz. I w- not all, you know what I mean. But yeah, as far as the vocal delivery, yeah, that's that's a key component. Yeah, and, and you know they say that. Yeah, and then it's depicted in the movie, but it's like he wasn't the greatest singer, but he seemed to have this captive effect on the women in the audience. They're like, okay, we gotta. This is the yeah, guy we I, need. I saw that part. Yeah. I made it up to there at least so far, but. Makes sense. I mean, oh, of course it makes sense. That goes with it. We've talked about that endlessly. It's not your talent isn't the most important thing when you're trying to make it in some kind of creative venture. It's not the number one attribute. You know, no. you'd be the most talented person in the world, but if no one cares what you're doing, no one cares. If you don't make people care somehow, whether it's intentional or not. I mean, you have the guy from sabotage you know experiencing sure. moderate commercial success sure and vince neal being on top of the world at certain right. points it's like, well just goes to show you a guy like that is either going to be a worldwide superstar or a complete nobody there's not gonna be any middle ground there yep um so uh and and one of the, the other thing going on in the movie is they had some some of the stuff was re-recorded or whatever but they played uh the uh original version of looks that kill at some point uh in the movie and just i I found myself keying in on the vocal of that song and just be like this is great you know just extremely well delivered and you know uh, everybody everybody loves too fast for love and shout at the devil Mm -hmm. then they just kind of kind of lost it in my opinion with theater of pain just got too glammy and there was no authority or substantial uh element to the production but they definitely righted the ship here big time That last what it that uh, sorry <laughs> go, go ahead. ahead go ahead no that last run of the guitar solo uh-huh. I'm reading it here and I'm like oh man it, it sounds way more complicated than it looks here mm. so I'm thinking this is either wrong or I don't know because <laughs> it's be wrong. there's there's more of a descending quality than what I'm seeing here it's a lot more repetitive on here but anyway the, um, speaking of Mick Mars yeah <laughs> has anybody ever been able to confirm that that's him. Uh, doing it's, the I mean, vocal on that part, he's mouthing it in the video. Yeah, but is it actually? I always assumed. Something? I always assumed oh, that must be him. And if so, what is he saying? Um, Sounds like my cat throwing up. <laughs> it's uh, it's, it's ladies and gentlemen, come play with Doctor Feelgood, isn't it? I never knew the first part. I, I guess it could be ladies and gentlemen, but yeah, come play with Doctor. Play Feelgood it again. Is what I'm I pretty always... sure it's ladies and gentlemen. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's it at the beginning. It's barely audible, but for some reason I always, always was able to pick that out there. I hope that's him. We're going to say it is. Yeah. I always enjoyed that part of the video in particular. Sorry, I'm going back to uh, Wild Side slightly. Which I think they did this in Wildside, doing those uh, little taps and uh, you know, kind of tapping and releasing and pulling off, making it sound like a siren, mm-hmm. right there. Wasn't that? 
Or no, they use an actual an siren. Actual siren. That's right. They also they did in Wild Side the same thing they did in here with the. Huh! It's one of those. <laughs> yeah. Always yeah. a good inclusion again. Yeah, I mean, it's rock a, it, vocal standpoint. Some sort of uh, simulation of taking a blow to the abdomen. Always welcome in rock uh, songs. <laughs> Not enough of it these days. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever thought of that part right there and thought that it, there's something similar to Thriller, this guitar part? Da, 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 da. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Like if I think of it in my head, sometimes it'll start to uh, mm. veer to the other one. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm not to saying it's like a ripoff or anything. I'm just saying like if I'm You're th- humming along to it. You're saying beat it? Or beat it, beat it. Yes, okay. yeah, sorry. Yeah. I always said Thriller. Dun, yeah. Dun, 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 oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, I can hear yeah, it now. I hear it now. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, who knows? I mean... It, that's, it, but that's like a thing where it just it just happens in your head, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's... Like uh, if I'm just I have not that. actually listening to this, just like thinking about it, because I don't know why, that's one of those... Probably the main part of this song that pops in my head randomly is this guitar part. And yeah. then... And, Naturally, it just blends into the beat. It. Part. I have I have stuff like that too, where if I if I hear a certain song or if I'm thinking of a certain song, there's another one that yeah, it kind of cross fades. That's not, a, that's not a, a bad thing. That's not me taking a shot at anything. No, it's just, no, it's just it's a phenomenon. Yeah, it's a mental phenomenon mm-hmm. that that happens. <laughs> Always yeah, I always that. like that part. <laughs> Me too. I wish, that was, I wish that was at full volume, but that's okay. Well, it, like a, a lot of the Kiss songs we did, it's like, oh man, that's I want to hear what happens after that. Yeah, and that's probably the idea. Leave you wanting more, make you think that it kind of what was the goes song? in another what direction. It, what was the song after this on the album? I can't remember. It is slice of your pie. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh boy! There are a lot of tracks on this album, huh? Well, this is uh, bonus tracks. But how many? Uh, Eleven actual. Oh, huh. okay. And a lot of s- a lot of singles, right? If I'm oh, not mistaken, yeah. it was like without you. Same old situation. Don't go away, don't man. Go away mad. So you got four right there. There's probably another one. Kickstart my heart. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Oh, yeah. So half the album, basically singles. Huge album, huge and, success. And also Terror in Tinseltown doesn't even count as a song. So right. yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Huge, huge home run for the crew. No doubt about it. I would be sh- surprised if there were any dissenters out there. But, again, because of their unsavoriness as human beings, it might factor into somebody's assessment. It shouldn't, but it might. Well, guys, Nick, you pick the song. You vote first. It's it's a uh, sweet surrender for me, of course. It's sweet surrender. Hell yes. <laughs> um, yeah, it's. I kind of summed it up. I think before uh, we went into the song, but I remember this one very well. This was a this was a band that I remember liking a lot when I was. I mean, I was like eight, nine, ten, you know, Mm -hmm. and this was like one of the the bands that I was definitely paying attention to whenever a video came on. They had, you know, it kind of figures into the what they're doing with the movie. Still, they're still they're still chipping away at the whole, you know, crafting their image and uh, and all that. And that's of course a big thing back then in the in the dial MTV days. Because you could have a great song, but uh, if you have a boring video, then that's uh, that's only, you only did half the work, really. Yeah. 
and uh, they were always great at both. And um, the song sounds great, and uh, it's super heavy, crunchy kind of thing for yeah. that for that time period. Um, just a, a a cool song and a cool subject matter. Um, one of those things where you know in in entertainment like rock music in particular, you don't want to be preachy. That's like the thing everybody's afraid of. Um, and it doesn't come off that way. So if that's, if that's a, if that's a, uh, limitation here, then I'd say that they took it as far as they could, you know, cause they're, they're, they're a clean band at this time. And, uh, they're talking about the downfall of a drug dealer so they can still, it's still menacing but you know the whole, the whole thing he doesn't uh he doesn't overcome it's not a, it's not a party there's kind of a moral there yeah um, it's a cautionary and, tale yeah cautionary but tale. delivered well yeah and done done very well yeah. and just a really cool song always enjoyed it so who wants to go next chris yeah big huge the sweetest of sweet surrenders for me it's sweet surrender A candy cane surrender, yes, as you will. Exactly. Uh, That's uh, sweet. A uh, packet of sweetness from Jigsaw Jimmy <laughs> coming my way. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, how, how many how many songs or f- musical things in your life truly are like? I remember when and where I was when I heard that. Um, you know, some might have more than others. For me. Uh, is definitely this is one of them um also i would equate this with the uh uh the first boston album that came out in 76 when you heard that you're like okay this is a this is a seismic leap forward in terms of production of a rock album and uh you know to to beat a beat a dead horse but to, again to reiterate fucking metallica heard this and was like this is what we need to sound like when they hated everything about the sunset strip scene and i mean that alone is such a ringing endorsement of what they accomplished i mean this is a this is a a masterpiece uh uh, this song i'll I'll just keep it referring to the song but you could probably apply it to the whole album but um a masterpiece just nailed it home run everything perfect i agree with you sweet surrender it's sweet surrender hell yes another band who's uh who's biopic i want to i want to <laughs> see in 20 years i haven't heard so, uh, changing the subject on the dr feel good quickly Joe Lynn turner or uh, <laughs> no. buck cherry, buck cherry. No, what was that like? Ten years ago, when they were opening for Kiss, I haven't heard much about them since then. Have they been yeah, putting still out a new, new album music? Out within out the there. past month or so? Oh, okay, it's called War Paint or something. Have you heard it? I've not. Okay, I heard their uh, had like a whole cover from yeah from, from it? a few months back. I don't know if it's from the album or not, but yeah, that's one that really pretty, just they did a pretty good job. Yeah, on but of course, you know, your Nine Inch Nails purists are just reject it outright but I, I i in fact nick was the one who shared it with me so sent the link and I, I didn't mind it they've had some personnel changes uh whatnot but uh, they're still at it cool anyway sweet surrender um again what i always focused in on not probably not when i was a kid because i didn't even know what was going on i just thought it was fun to watch the video with my brothers or whatever but it was always like the drum groove because if I don't know when you listen to this song, that opening drum part lays the foundation for the whole song, you know. And then it's almost like I don't know if this is how it actually happened, and it probably isn't, but it almost seems like that was a beat, and they're like, okay, we're gonna do something with that. Just yeah. not like we have this song, and then oh, can I work this beat into it? I feel like that was a beat. And they were going to write a song around either it. that, or they just had that that you know open E palm mute rhythm, and Tommy Lee was like, All right, "That's I'm like gonna, I, I'm going to accent own, that rhythm." 
on its own, that's like nothing without the drum beat. Not that I'm not saying it's bad, and the but, song does oh, go yeah. other places. Yeah, but on its own, that's just like that's, you wouldn't sit at, with your guitar and be like, "I got something here." Musically, there are two. there's there's two signature moments. It's that when that main riff kicks in. Yeah, and yeah, like the the intro with the palm muting and the uh, the drum oh, and the hi hat is what makes yeah. it. right. That's what I'm saying. So, so if you just did a straight quarter notes on the hi hat. Big deal. It though. wouldn't be anything. So it's like ACDC at that point. Not a bad thing, but it's all in that the hi hat placement. Brilliant. And that's a that's a drum beat that I remember when I was younger. I'm like, I got I, I gotta figure this out. That's like, one of those for I, how sure. Do I, how do I do this? That would be so cool to be able to play this. Yeah. But it's not complicated. It's not a fucking. It's not Tom Sawyer. You know. It's not that. It's like subtly complicated like yeah. there's some finesse to it but it's not like virtuoso yeah. complicated yeah it's, right. it's the 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 kick and the hi-hat it's the footwork right. that's the, exactly. the part that you have to I was nail down to say the kick drum pattern in there as well but uh and you know you you also keyed in uh, that last bit of uh, the guitar riff that sounds like beat it again nothing complicated very no. simple but just perfect and it's, yeah. you they, know they took the riff they already had yeah and just added something to it and faded it out it worked yeah and uh you know back again back in the time when everybody just had to throw out as many notes as they could possibly play or or like we said you know they they hear tom sawyer and suddenly you've got these massive drum kits and they're got to play fucking rolls on everything here you have just st- just simplicity that, uh, as Gene would say, cracks your ribs, and uh, that's what you want. Well, guys, did you know <laughs> no. that three sweet surrenders wins you a trip to the next round? Oh, my. All right, Hammond! I got a question for you. Paul Stanley, for some reason, <laughs> <laughs> is curious. He yes. wants he wants us to be talking about it hot in the shade at this point. Right. That's true. But he still wants to know. Is Dr. Feelgood a rock and roll boner classic? Hmm. Well, Kiss and the crew shared a bill, didn't they? Fair, somewhat recently, this decade or Yeah, the tour. The was, tour. What yeah. was that like 20 uh, 13, 12? Somewhere around there. I did went you guys go to that? I went to that. Yeah. I did not. How was it? It was cool. Yeah, it was good. It was a good. It was a, a nice one-two punch. That's for sure. Yeah, I'll bet. We w- was it you and me who saw the crew? At, was it New York Dolls, Poison? Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, Motley Crew. Yep. Yeah, that was the one time I've seen them. Damn good. Yeah, that was probably like Get your money's worth from y- them. I think that was the tour before the tour. I think. Okay. Yeah, that was a while ago already. But yeah, another one of those bands you get your money's worth. There's no uh, a bunch of dickheads and coveralls plunking <laughs> around on mandolins in a tight circle. <laughs> it's like, give me the bombs, give me the hot chicks oh, yeah, in leather that. fucking dancing around and singing. And, and Tommy drum, Lee. Well, and, yeah, yeah. And the drum set coming out. I mean, those guys... You know they got a little, little petty with their saying that Kiss copied them with the cranes and stuff. And they kind of did. I mean, but still, you know. Well, did you ever read anything about that? That it's basically like a company makes this yeah. shit and then leases it out to bands. Yeah. Hey, do you want this cool thing? Yeah, I'll yeah. take that. Of course. So isn't it funny how they do that though? Like bands who. Well, either eventually or have toured together, we'll take shots at each other in the media like that. Yeah. You wonder why. Right. But, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Tommy Lee was calling out several people <laughs> in the last year or so. This guy stole my thing. This guy stole my thing. Oh, yeah, because someone did the roller coaster yeah, thing. Yeah, it was a rapper, I think. Hmm. With a drum set or with something oh, else? I don't know, but I think that I thought the guy a was turn a Turntable deck. Yeah, Coming out over the crowd and spinning <laughs> around upside down. Maybe. Could work. Why not? Yeah. Some guy sitting in front of a laptop like they do these days. 
rotating around above you. I don't know. It just doesn't have the same pizzazz <laughs> to me. <laughs> With his mouse kind of like you know, <laughs> spot, trying to free fall. Then you know, again, these motherfuckers dangling. are up there basically behind a fucking banquet table. With their goddamn laptop open, and there's fifty thousand people at a festival yeah, yeah. going berserk for this. That's this shit. that's a surreal. I, I don't get thing. that. I don't get. I, 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 guilty as charged, clueless old man. Yeah. What is? Where is the? And uh, I'll where's admit, the talent? I'll admit that I'm clueless as to what they actually do in a performance. Like, capacity. are they doing something? Or is this on stuff the where it's like, okay, you deserve credit for the stuff you crafted at home before this that you're playing for everybody? Yeah. But whether are they doing anything live other than pressing yeah, play? I don't know. Because I mean, like years ago. Not that I know that much about it and have never done it, have never actually seen anybody do it, but when you've got the dual turntable thing that people were doing where they were having to s- slow records down with their finger to match the beats before they cross-faded things yeah. and all that, that's, I mean, that's pretty impressive if you think about that's all that. That's a different type of skill, but yeah, but, it's But I'm life. not sure to what extent that that still happens in a digital world with Are laptops. You, just a, you know, a, a MacBook opened up with the... Yeah. Apple logo <laughs> visible. It's I was like, gonna hey, say this that. Is not. I was gonna say that. If you see that on stage, that's just so off-putting. Yeah, it's like, what are you sending emails <laughs> from right. right now? I mean, what are you doing? Yeah, you be tweeting during his performance. Yeah, exactly. Even I've even I'm seen like it. skyping with somebody. I've seen <laughs> keyboard players. I don't know if there's like if you could run patches through a MacBook or something. You're still physically playing. But I've seen that, and even just the sight of the laptop on the stage is yeah. off-putting. Even though they're still physically doing the work, they're just using like that as either. like their sound <laughs> module or something. Yeah. But I just don't want to see it. If, nope. if that's the case, hide it. Yeah. I don't totally. want to. It looks like you're doing work. Like yeah, but then you have a, you literally have nothing. You're standing well, up there with. You I know. I just meant the keyboard guy. Like oh, if you're okay. really playing, and that's your sound module is your laptop. Just hide it under something and yeah, still play the keyboard. Yeah. You don't. I don't want to see it open with a Apple lid. No, up. you're right about that. Yeah, that's, I, I don't get it. But ridiculous. Clueless old man. Yeah, guilty. you're right. Whatever. Well, my vote's in. Shouldn't come as any surprise to anyone. Nick. Yeah, my vote's in. My vote's in. Andy, Nick, Chris. And again, it has to be unanimous. Rock, roll, and boner. So we'll see. Any one of us can derail it here. Nick, those are nice socks. They look warm. They're not bad. They're my sick socks. Yeah. Wear them often, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Become my regular go-to socks. All right. Rock. Roll. Throbbing boner. Get it right. Kind of a Vince Neil esque uh, yeah. t- 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 qualities a there. A bit of a tirade, and the, and the the voice itself, There's some similarities. Yeah, nasally, right. kind of nasally. Yeah. 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 Well, there you have yeah, it. Yeah, I think we got it right. That's uh, <laughs> that's a masterpiece. Uh, no two ways about it, in my my opinion. No, it'd be hard to disagree. If well, you disagree, you never know. It's possible, but if you did, you'd have to have some kind of something invoking would, the Me Too movement. Something had to know. happen. Well, if if yeah. you actually read articles of in bringing that up or about I, the Motley Crue thing, yeah, yeah, I yeah. did. Yeah. Well, and and I trust me that the 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 objectification of women is just over the top in this movie. But again, it's. It w- who doesn't know that's what they were about? Right. If you don't like it, avoid it. But it, uh, what they're basically what they're saying is this shouldn't have come out because we don't want to glorify it. It's like fuck you, man. Just because you don't like it, you can't. This is this is censorship. Okay. This is yeah. This is not you know um, uh, someone like you know invoking some some kind of rule that you don't have to 
necessarily abide by. These are people who don't want certain things to come out because it doesn't coincide with their opinion or agenda. Right. Yeah. That ain't right. Right. And to be clear, I'm not like, oh, I'm against that. Of course not. You know, I don't think that treating women like shit is cool. But again, it's what happened. Like, and that's, if someone wants to put out the story of this band that, and this is what it was like then, and they were, you know, guys in their early, mid-20s, and this is what, this <laughs> is how the world was around them, and this is how they reacted to yeah, it. Yeah, but I and mean, th- it's... That's the story. You don't, it's don't, so, it's don't change so it. It's so clearly still the standard. It's still the way that it goes. You mean with... With, with with objectifying women, it's just in life, it, or whether, in yeah, entertainment well, or entertainment whatever. for yeah. sure. Turn yeah. on the TV, sure. I mean, it's it's not something that went away because there's something called a Me Too movement. Hmm. I mean, it maybe will at some point not be as rampant, but sure. it's 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 absolutely still the standard. Sure. So I mean, and yeah, I'm sure it's over the top in this movie. I would imagine that's probably one of the selling points of the movie. But again, it's. Isn't that's like what the whole band was about? Yeah, that scene, you know. Yeah, the whole scene was about that. Well, yeah, the whole scene was, and they were one of the, you know, <laughs> kingpins of that scene. So that right. makes sense that that's what the movie would be about. It's not just gonna be them sitting around practicing music. Who would watch that? You know, I, I would. I'd be curious. I would be curious too, but well, it wouldn't be a movie. <laughs> but, but again, you didn't get there. There was none of that element in Bohemian Rhapsody because that's not the kind of band they were. Although. Right. You could, you know, the to invoke Chris Jericho's favorite word, the bacchanalia of the <laughs> stuff that Freddie Mercury engaged in. They kind of touched on it a little bit. The whole release party he had for Night at the Opera, I think, down in New Orleans that lasted like several days. Was just oh, really? Pure decadence for days, you know. And uh, yeah, Jigsaw Jimmy probably made an appearance yeah, there. And I'm it's thinking. just like, you know, that just... <laughs> That was kind of the thing. It's like you had carte blanche to fucking just conduct yourself any way you saw fit. And there were consequences, obviously, for Freddie Mercury and Vince Neil killed somebody and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, okay, it's it, it, it's a it's a historical look back, which, again, not so much because they messed with the facts to fit the storyline. But, but still, it's it's... It's like a time capsule is what they're trying to show you. And that's apparently, I wasn't there, but apparently that's what it was like then. So that's what's interesting about it. Not that I know. I remember reading a few things here and there, but it seemed like, you know, like Brian May, um, Roger Taylor were pretty, were pretty in on how the story was going to be told. Kind of like... we have the chance to sort of put our legacy out there. Yeah. Maybe not rewrite it, but put out what we want, what we want the focus to be. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, I mean, Nikki six put out this book however many years ago and the movie. And oh, I think it was by all, it was, oh, it was, was it? all of the guys telling their stories to a writer who wrote. Oh, the book okay. I think, them. okay. Well, there you go. Nikki six is, uh, maybe not intentionally, but he's got me convinced he wrote this book. He wrote uh, the heroin diaries. Oh, that's years what I, later, okay. Pardon me, which is totally different. But this is this is the similar kind of a situation where it's a band who is, I mean, they're still active in certain ways, but you know, the the most of it is behind them. Sure, and they're they're putting out their uh, what they want their legacy to be. Right, that makes perfect sense. And they're 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 at the reins. Yeah, trust so. me, they're. They're reveling in the attention. They're loving it, you know. And uh, but whatever, if if there's gonna be a backlash, what could it possibly be? And again, there's. This is the easiest thing in the world to avoid. Just don't yeah. fucking watch it, you know. There've been plenty of things that I'm not interested in, so I don't watch it. It's not gonna set society back to the '80s. People aren't just gonna suddenly go back to this behavior. It's just. And here's another question. I don't expect either of you to know the answer to this, and I definitely don't. But in whatever circle of like, I don't know, whoever is super popular, I'm, again, old man who doesn't know anything, but like let's say Lollapalooza, take like the headliners. 
Don't you think that they're still conducting themselves like this? There's still a scene like this. It's not totally gone. I think my my opinion, and it's kind of maybe a bit too far that way, yeah. <laughs> but I feel like um, sport professional sports there you teams, go. Yeah, them too. Uh, traveling entertainers, it's got to be up in the 90% just right. of like... So for people to be like, this is... The whole take what you can get kind of attitude while you're in town. I, I think, yeah, the, it's 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 still is, I think. like Right. Way more often than not. At least I just don't think it's I've part heard. of the presentation. Image. Yeah, right. it's not part of the image. I think it's still there. It goes on. There's so still women who are very interested in spending short amounts of time with these people, right? Like, yeah. Oh, f- you know, I'm sure there's still groupies of some sort for, I can't even think of people's names, but like whatever well, headliners of like Coachella like, and stuff. Can, is the guy, is the front man from Arcade Fire really honking up lines off chicks asses? Well, I'm not necessarily, I mean, it might be true. It might not be true, but I'm thinking like whatever pop stars, the DJs you were talking about, like whoever is, right, but, you know, because that's a different like you wouldn't think Think of like a like, you know, R.I.P. of course, but like like a Vinnie Paul. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how, how I figure a lot of these guys s- still conduct themselves like his his, <laughs> well, that, his yeah, reputation but, was what strip club we hit in, you know, oh, whatever sure. town, you but know, let's go. He's and do talking this. about like headliners if you're Coachella's and whatever. Yeah, I'm talking, so I'm like, talking like people in their vampire 20s. weekend. Are these guys well, doing lions off chicks asses but, backstage? Uh, I'm but thinking like DJs and rappers more in that world. That well, has, but, they have a little bit more grit to them. Their image isn't necessarily as clean cut. I think that stuff's still going on. Well, yeah, but uh, you 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 were asked about headliners well, and basically who are the headliners that know. we're talking about? That's what I want to know. But th- I I named a couple. That's but I what like I think. I feel like those are of. older it's, groups already. Yeah, but still, I'm talking like whoever's I don't even young, know. Well, okay, like Arcade Fire is probably in their forties. Yeah, but who is it? Who is this? Who is that other? Bullshit band that uh, God, I can't even think of. Imagine Dragons. Well, okay, there's one. <laughs> are they like, are they that band yeah. that we're talking about? I don't, I don't know. know. Fucking uh, Kings of Leon. Are they? You know, probably an orgies backstage. I, mean, I don't know. That's not. It's not how they present themselves on stage. Yeah, They're like sensitive guys. You know, what are you having? Fucking making tender love to these women deep eye contact going on. I mean, what, what, what is going on? I mean, seriously, I is it, is that kind of behavior happening? You know? I, I, I personally just take the cynical viewpoint of pretty much everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't doubt it, yeah. but it's just like, it's hard to imagine the guy from uh, arcade fire doing a line of cocaine on some chick's asshole. I just, <laughs> can't connect the two but he maybe he is doing it anyway you have to anchify the uh result yeah do that yet if you disagree we're sorry that's just the fucking way it is all right kendrick lamar one of the headliners of Lollapalooza. how is he conducting himself how what? about post malone what is post malone oh, doing? I don't, who, he's who got face tats knows. who the hell no that's a, that uh, again i completely i don't get that at all the hell these are some of the main bands arctic monkeys they're kind of old too already 21 pilots i've heard of them (laughs) don't really know them never heard of them well they're the sunday headliner but that was my question about like mumford and sons like do women really actually want to fuck these guys they probably do and they probably are so are they being violated by these guys is there is their health and happiness being compromised by trying to get backstage and having a tryst with these guys? It's basically the same thing. Right. Travis Scott. Don't I don't know, know who he is. I bet you he's, he's doing the, tons he's of cocaine. The, he's the guy. No, never mind. I thought he was the one that Tommy Lee called out for something. I could be wrong. Might be. I don't know. Hell if I know, but yeah. yeah. Whatever. He's born in 1991, whoever he is. So. Well, before <laughs> the song was two years before that guy was born. Yeah, well, I hope these guys are doing that because that's part of the part of the perks. 
Oh, Travis Scott is married to a Jenner, so there you go. He's in that one. Oh, boy. Whatever that is. I'm kind of glad I don't know anything about what's going on. It all sounds stupid. Yeah. Whatever. I'm content with being an old fart. I will have nothing to listen to in 10 years. It's a natural order of things. Everyone I listen to will be gone in 10 years. Yeah, right. Did you see uh, Slash is playing it? Lollapalooza? That's oh, interesting. Yeah, that's a weird oh, one. That's, that's definitely odd. I mean, I think it's cool that they added him, but it's like... Why? I don't know, these fucking <laughs> pussies are going to be able to make of him. Yeah. It's but a weird combo. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you know what time it is. Sing away. That's right. Yes, Chief. Baseball starting this week, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Say thank goodness and my goodness. Oh, I yeah, know. more nap fodder for me. I I know as many uh, ba- like baseball all stars who are current as these Lollapalooza <laughs> headliners. Yeah, I've totally lost what's going on in yeah. major sports. Thankfully, though, well, you still get it from sports, but you, thankfully in music, you don't get people coming up to you randomly and dropping a last name and asking what you thought of what he did last night. I have no idea who that is. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Out of the loop. I was thinking that aside from football, I can't remember the last time I watched a regular season sports game all the way through. Yeah. It's been, yeah. It's difficult. It's been... Probably more than 10 years. Wow. Like, hockey and basketball? Never. This I've had phases where I've gotten time. really interested, but it's been like a good four or five years where I've cared. Yeah. I just haven't watched anything. I used to be really into hockey, and then I watched a fair amount of Bulls games probably like close to 10 years ago now. But don't care anymore. Out of the loop. Don't even know who's on the team. They still got Ben Gordon on the team. I don't know. (laughs) Kirk Heinrich's still out there. No. Anyway. (laughs) Baseball season, huh? I mean, honestly, I'd be... I, I'd be just surprised if I turned on a, a game and Horace Grant wasn't out there. <laughs> <laughs> Did he get <laughs> LASIK? <laughs> I don't see him. Um, okay. I, that's weird. Like, I can kind of tie this together to Dr. Feelgood in a weird way, but it makes me think of, like, summer days as a kid, you know, when you were off for the summer from school, where it would have been around then and a little bit later, but watching like the rerun of Sports Center or baseball yeah. tonight in the morning when you get up, and then watching videos on MTV oh, like yeah, I mean, that's like the first four or five hours of your day before you decide to go ride your bike <laughs> or whatever. It's like then you then, then you know everything. Yeah, yeah but, but back then you knew like all the All Star players. You knew who everyone was. Yeah. Now you feel like these players don't count. Like they're not as good. Be- just because you don't know them, you're like, oh, well, you're not as good there as Ken go. Griffey Jr. <laughs> but I'm sure they are, you know? It's just you don't know who they are anymore. It's weird. It's, it's a natural weird. order of things. Yeah. All those sports, you know, you still have dorks who are way into it, well into their 50s and beyond. It's like, eh. Football, I, I admit I keep tabs on it just because I have this... The, the Lions are the only Detroit team that have never won a title in my lifetime. They probably won't either, but I just feel compelled to pay attention until that happens. Once that happens, you're done? I hope so. <laughs> but uh, Plus, it's it's one game a week. It's easier to keep track of. But that's, that's true. true. That's true. All right. Well, this week's Yardo Questions comes to us from... Jared, drunk at 3.30 a.m. Thursday morning, Rumon. <laughs> at what so time? 3.30. 3.30 a.m. Oh. So the yeah. next uh, hung option. Out with, hung out with them at that time. Oh, so yeah. I can, absolutely. I, can, I can picture it. Absolutely. So the next thing, your social media info. He says sex offenders aren't allowed on social media. Sad face. Jeez. So, <laughs> our friend Jared, who went to uh, the same grade school as us, <laughs> no. glad uh, to see. Hi, Jared. How are you? You know, 
He's not a sex offender. No, he's not. He's kidding. But back before Just Pot of Thunder, know. back before Pot of Thunder, we did a radio show with Jared. So how about that? An online radio show with Jared all the time. All right, here we go. Questions. Hiya, potheads. I have a steaming 36 inches worth of questions you for go. you. That's him, so, all right. So here it goes. I'd know even if you didn't tell me the name. <laughs> Steaming 36 inches, huh? Oh, yeah. Is that a boner or a turd? Oh, it's, a, it's, it's a boner. Okay. Gotta be a turd. It's <laughs> <that boner. laughs> a real toss turd. <laughs> either way. Yeah, either way. Below a certain temperature. If you're <laughs> yeah. outside, it's going to yeah. be steamy. Something steaming. <laughs> All right. Question one. What do you think of hologram <laughs> technology for concerts? For example, Ronnie James Dio, Frank Zappa, Tupac. Wouldn't wouldn't even consider paying for that, Nick. Um, if it were somebody who I just would find it interesting to somebody I never had that would have had a chance to see, and you've got like I know with the Dio thing, it's kind of a little more authenticated in my opinion uh, than other cases because you've got his his band. You've got like the guys who played with him up until the point that he died, I think. Okay. So if he were still out there, it would be with these guys. So it's like, oh, that's kind of the, well. <laughs> Craig <laughs> Goldie, I fucking hate that guy. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> he's, he's one of my least favorite players. Just a <laughs> just a bad look and just not a not a it, just a to me a just completely nondescript player. So of course he'd be associated with this. It's um, it's a novelty. It's a pure novelty. Would, but they're ma- like in the case of Dio's band, they're making a career out of it. Well, that, so I don't know. Of course they are because they'd be out in the street if they they'd be on Anvil's level if they didn't. <laughs> It's pound, true. These guys the are chumps. <laughs> Fucking Craig Goldie. Get out of here. Fucking figure something else out. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't pay a penny to see that. I couldn't to even... see any, anything at all if it was done nothing. that way? Nothing. I, I just... It's... What's the point? To me, Jesus. nobody asked me, but to me, I think it'd be interesting to see once. Not necessarily to appreciate the... Uh, Oh, it's like you're seeing the concert. I think I would just like to see how the technology works. There's that, yeah. But I, d- I don't. I wouldn't make. Uh, I wouldn't go through the year and be like, "These are the hologram shows I'm going to this year." <laughs> I think I would just like to see what it I, looks like. Right, but I, even out that of curiosity doesn't interest me even in the slightest. For, for me, if it would be if it's someone I like, and if it's their the live performance is something interesting, also. Yeah. It's not gonna be if there's <laughs> if there's a full band going and it's you know it's pretty good and you then who knows but yeah. I I think it's more of a an interesting novelty yeah. with I I think it's got people's imaginations as far as what the possibilities can be but it's kind of sad at the same time because it's like well a lot of like us you know the way we were just talking about like the Lollapalooza headliners like there's not a lot going on. That we're that we're fans of these yeah, days, right. and these people you figure something else to do out to do with your time. Then that's true, but I mean a lot. Just, as far as a, a live performance kind of thing, a lot of the bands that are Chris just the did people, the get out of here with they're, that. They're not signal. getting it's they're not getting replaced in a lot of people's minds. These bands are not getting replaced. So Obviously, it's like, well, they're not. They're we're dead. Gonna, we're gonna have to yeah, we're gonna have to dig them up, I guess, and or put them back. Just on let stage. it rest. How about that? Just but, because. Fucking Craig Goldie <laughs> needs a job, <laughs> and Wendy Dio wants to pad her fucking bank account. You're gonna be part and parcel of that. Fuck that. Well, Piss on these assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, in the same vein ah, of what you so said, stupid. I'm sure that like generations before would say the same thing. You yeah, know, I like suppose so. our heroes are gone, and these new guys are not. These are not interesting Please. to me. Yeah. You know, so. It's just like Chris said. It's just the well, natural but, cycle. But, but now there's this technology where but now uh, there's this technology. Apparently, yeah, we can keep them keep them on stage. Yeah, you can't. It's stupid. It's bullshit. Don't. And there's money to be made. That's well, really yeah. What it's it's, all well, about. there's money to be made because there's shitheads who show up <laughs> for this crap. <laughs> 
shitheads. <laughs> it's, tr- it's true. <laughs> it's stupid, man. Let it rest. The motherfucker is dead, okay? Accept it. Jesus. Question two. This is a good one. Put together a super group using one person from the 60s, one person from the 70s, oh one person from the 80s, etc. until your group is complete. Nick can start from the 30s if he wants because <laughs> he is a weirdo. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm not going to say Charlie Christian for my guitar player, so don't worry. Is he from the 30s? I think 30s, 40s, yeah. You kidding? Nobody. Why don't they do a Glenn, <laughs> Why don't they do a Glenn Miller hologram? Have him conducting go, a man. big band. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wiggling your turn around once in a while and yeah. do take a solo. Yeah. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> you go. Okay. Uh, wow. Okay. So I'll start at the sixties, huh? Okay. I'm rifling through the sixties right now. Uh, it's clear to me. Got to go with the, uh, got to go with John Fogarty as mm. the uh, front man. Front man, guaranteed. You're a big Fogarty fan. Pretty big that. Fogarty fan. Hope Solid stuff. Hopefully no more on that later. Oh, there will be more on that later. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go Fogarty to anchor the whole thing. It's not a bad call there. Um, let's see. I'm thinking. Uh, ooh. Um, I was going to be cool and say Terry Kath for lead guitar, but not like enormously into him or anything. Like, I get it. He was great, but uh, I'm not going to say him. Um, let's see. <sighs> I want to go with uh, with the lead guitar player from the 70s. Uh, <laughs> not, that <laughs> not that there was a shortage. Uh, yeah, these are tough. Questions. These are tough, man. Um See, who would, but who would be complimentary to Fogarty's style? I'll go, um... Uh, who? <laughs> I could no, use, I'm saying it doesn't, all the it doesn't have to be. Yeah, well... See the direction of I'm hoping for a super group that will have chemistry. <laughs> yeah. Which is, we don't have the time which to is gonna be take the first a while. one in history. <laughs> all right, so, you know what, from the 70s, uh, I'm going to go Stuart Copeland on cool. the drums. Okay. So Fogarty and Copeland, forget about it. Put any, they would be any, fighting any, before any, any bum in there. As it was, if once the band starts playing, any any other guys in there can't fail. How long would it take for their first fist fight between <laughs> those two? It, it would be tough. Two yeah. of the most uh, grouchiest guys in music history. All right, so I guess I, I I'm done with the '70s now. No, give us an '80s guitar player. '80s guitar player, huh? Um, or bass player, I guess. Yeah, well, plays I'm the gonna go. I gotta go. I gotta wait till the '90s for the bass player, my my go-to bass player. Um, then, as far as a lead guitar player from the '80s, who? Uh, man, I'm having. A, I'm, I'm. Randy I'm, Rhodes. I mean, I, yeah, that's <laughs> a, like the easy call. Yeah. I don't know how that would work Bruce though. Bruce Kulick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, no, seriously. He went on to do Grand Funk and all that. He could work with them. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, that and then uh, for all my bass playing needs, I would like to have Mr. Robert DeLeo from the 90s. So. I thought so. Yeah. There Good you one. go. There's my That's super a good band. group. That will See, that actually came together pretty well. I was going to try to rush you through it, but you actually pulled some good ones out. Like for as far as chemistry goes, you didn't just name four people, but this that ba- would work. This band would tear the roof off. It would. No Chris? doubt about it. Sixties front man, I would bring Jim Morrison back. Not as a hologram, but seventies, <laughs> uh, I'd probably want my drummer from there, so jeez. Oh man. Give me uh, give me Brian Downey of Thin Lizzy. Uh, 80s guitarist Billy Duffy of the cult and then 90s bass player I'm going to poach Nick's pick and go Robert DeLeo very uh, cannot go wrong with that no probably probably the best bass player of the 90s very old school yet contemporary 
That's my dream. fellow Schechter man. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Nikki Six was a Schechter man was he? toward the end. Yeah. Question. Good company there. Yeah. Actually, I never heard of Schechter, and I went to Guitar Center because I was going to buy a new bass. So this was 2002 or three, whenever I bought that one behind Nick, and I was like, "Man, I like this. It looks cool. It feels good. You know, the important things." It's like I've never heard of this though, so I didn't buy it. Looked him up on the internet, saw Rob DeLeo was an endorsed guy, and I was like, all right, I'm going back tomorrow. I'm buying it. Yeah. There you go. I know it's a legit that's, company that's now. The, yeah. yeah. Pete Townsend played Schecter's throughout the 80s. Okay. Yeah. Legit brand, no question. Yeah. All right, question three. If you could have another wrestler besides Tooge on your show, who would it be? Living or dead? But probably dead because most wrestlers are dead. Oh well, you know my answer. I got one answer to these questions. There's one answer, they're, but it's two they're, guys. They're both yes. still alive. Yeah. Exactly. And the, that, is that is Luke and Butch, the Bushwhackers. Absolutely. <laughs> Giants of entertainment. <laughs> Nobody has even come close to those guys for just the way they would stalk around the ring. That's just brilliant to me. <laughs> well, I'm sure Andy could say what mine is, too. Next would be handsome Jimmy Valiant. That's true. I don't know how he'd be as a guest on a podcast. Uh, but he's a he's a fellow Hammond, a fellow born Hammond. in Hammond, and extremely entertaining when in his heyday. Just how old? Uh, he's alive, but what is he? Uh, he got to be about seventy, right? He's up there, yeah. Yeah, handsome Jimmy. Yeah, the boogie woogie man himself. There you Fantastic. go. Fantastic. We gotta make this happen. Such a <laughs> I didn't even think the the Hammond connection. I don't think he's anywhere near here though no. anymore, right? He doesn't <laughs> no. live yeah, around he here. Can come back. If he ever comes back to visit someone, maybe he's got a sister who lives around here. We've got to make a connection to handsome Jimmy. Bring your the bring the bushwhackers <laughs> with you. Uh, it's too bad we missed them by like a week. Um, we, it was when we were doing the podcast. I remember I was like, oh, in Griffith. The Bushwhackers? The, one of the Bushwhackers was at like a comic book store really? doing autographs. And then like the next week, Chris was like, I love the Bushwhackers. <laughs> like, I'm what? like, oh, we missed them by a week. Wow. Yeah, those guys are the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those, guy, those guys I remember because, you know, like Andy and I were prime age. He was, Well, yeah, Andy was too, I guess. Oh, yeah. For like late '80s, all those characters that came out, you know, WWF, and that was like absolutely speaking to us at our age. Totally. And I remember, yeah, the Bushwhackers. It was like there wasn't a whole lot to to what was going on with them, but it was <laughs> always like it was all you needed, and and it was you can imitate their walk, you know, you got a thing like that. You got a gimmick like yeah, that. Yeah, you, right? you got or something like you're identified with. Definitely. It's like the drum beat of Dr. <laughs> Feel Good. It's simple, <laughs> so it's deceptively simple, not too uh, crazy with all the bells and whistles, but it, it hits home. It's all you need. Works. And um, that, I was going to say when you did your drummer selection, that, always, that made me think of the same kind of thing. The drum beat to uh, Boys Are Back in Town. Not, yeah. not terribly, not terribly easy. Like it's a, I don't know that I've ever actually even like really attempted it, but just listening to it, well, it's it's not easy. <laughs> well, there, and there, to, you want to, to talk about more on that later. There will be some thin Lizzy coming down the pike, possibly in the next two weeks. You know, who knows? Okay. But incredible drummer amazing drumming from that guy i mean and for such a for a song that you've heard a zillion times if you really listen to the drums of it it's like i could you kind of think to yourself i can maybe do that but would it would it be would it have that drive to it absolutely not well, there's certain nuances of certain guys playing that you can never replicate but that's i mean there are so many great examples of just virtuoso drumming from that guy. We'll get to it. Yep. All right. Well, thank you, Jared. And if you, the listener, want to submit your yard of questions, go to potofthunder.com, click that little widget, and make it happen. One, two, three questions makes a yard. If you want to submit a song, there's a submit a song tab that goes to our list. Uh, if you want to buy some stuff, click the merch tab and buy away. 
So that's going to be it. Right? That's it? That should be it. Oh, and thank you to our, uh, our uh, what do we call this? Thank you to Julia Heberlein for the introduction uh, today. We need to acknowledge who does the introductions that's right. each week. Yeah, we forgot I forgot to week. ask about that. Who, yeah. Was that her or her child? It was Mark's child. Yeah. Okay. Julia. Right. Yeah. And last oh, week, okay, last week we it. forgot to acknowledge. Last week we forgot. It was John Churchill. So we gotta we we gotta be better. Well, Pot of Thunder Month is coming next month. Bar will be raised. Make no mistake about it. That's right. Coming in hot with two Chris picks. So. A full month. How many Mondays is that? That's five. Is it a five Because the first Monday is right on the first, so Ooh, extra gonna long. A, it's going to be a hell of a month. Yeah, it is. I got to prepare myself. I've got one week. I'm half. So that means I'll have, there will be three Chris picks in April. That's unbelievable. Oh, it's going to be the best pot of thunder month ever. <laughs> yeah, because it goes Chris, Chris, <coughs> Andy, Nick, Chris. Oh, boy. Wow. It's, boy. Get ready. <laughs> <laughs> we are uh, it's just... It's going to explode out of your speakers like Dr. Feelgood did for me back in 89. Get ready for it. La- last Do your day, calisthenics. Last day of March, you'll be able to see Chris uh, with the resin bag. <laughs> kind of tossing it back and forth, getting himself ready. Holding his hand over the blower. Yeah. <laughs> it just, it's going to happen. Yeah. All right. I'm ready for it. I'm not. Get ready for That's it. A, it's a, but I'm fine with not being ready for it. That's true. We'll see what happens. I hope you don't get sick again. Yeah, I'm yeah, sick yeah. already. It's not stopping anytime. Oh.